Hello, okay, so I'm here to do blog two, which talks about the core values questionnaire, ANA code of ethics, the AONE nurse executive competencies, and then the article about Jahi McMath. Um, I read the article from CNN about Jahi McMath, and unfortunately I wasn't very surprised by the actions of her parents um, working on a bone marrow transplant unit. I see firsthand people not ready to let go of their loved ones, and generally I see adults. I can only imagine the, you know, wanting to hold on with it being someone's child. Um, I can't pass judgment because I don't know how I would feel if my child were in that position. But as a nurse, I do know that I'm there to advocate for the patient and consider the quality of life that the patient is going to have if they were to survive. You know, no physicians don't know everything, but because of, you know, the way medicine is today, we are able to tell a lot about if a person is able to survive or if they're going to come back from a traumatic experience or accident. Um, it's sad to me, of course, because I had to Google whether or not this girl was still alive, and she is. Two years later, I guess the family recently released a photo of her saying she's alive and well. To me, I was like, okay, alive and well, let me see this photo. Like, is she going to be out playing with friends? But no, she still is trached on a ventilator. And, I mean, all I could just think about is her quality of life. Um, with my core values um, being happiness and integrity, you know, I just is this girl happy, you know, are the, do the nurses feel like they upheld their integrity by taking care of her? You can't really refuse to take care of a patient because that's what we're here to do, but, you know, you have to put those things aside, and that's why, um, you can't really use values to make decisions in healthcare, you know, I mean, you could use them if it was your personal experience, but as a nurse, you can't really use your values. Those have to be put aside, and you have to think more about the ANA code of ethics and things like that whenever you're going to make decisions and you're going to take care of your patients. Um, the competencies that I felt like were challenged regarding Jahi's situation were clinical practice knowledge and effective communication. Clinical practice knowledge was challenged because, as nurses, we know the medical um, medical background for this patient and what she's going to go through and what the doctors have said. And, you know, because of those things, we would be more apt to tell the family, you know, she's not going to survive. You have to let go. Things like that. Um, communication is challenged because you're communicating with people who don't have a medical background. Therefore, it's hard to tell all the facts or explain the pathophysiology behind what's going on inside of her body. So you really have to be able to get things in layman's terms. And when her condition is so critical and so, you know, medically involved, it's hard sometimes to explain those things to family members in a way that they'll understand or in a way that, you know, really lets them grasp the bigger picture here. Um, we use the ANOE nurse executive competencies for like self-evaluation and for guidelines and things like that. So, you know, they are good things to use, but you can't always make decisions based on those. Um, okay, so for the ANA, scope and standards, things that were challenged um, when values serve for making care decisions, I said uh, the nurse promotes, advocates, and protects the rights, health, and safety of the patient. And, I mean, clearly, you know, you're wanting the safety of the patient to be your main priority, you're wanting the health of the patient to be your main priority, and when you know that this person's going to suffer from pressure ulcers, bed sores, you know, no quality of life, honestly probably has no idea what's going on, just a lifetime of people doing every single thing for her, as a nurse, you don't want to see that happen. So that was definitely challenged in this situation. And then 
Also, the other one that I chose was maintenance of competence and continuous professional growth because, you know, you have to be accepting of new information that comes out. And this family had found a hospital across the country that said that they would take care of her. Therefore, you know, maybe they did have some kind of new technology or new medicine or something like that that they felt like needed to be um, basically an experiment to see if that would work for her. And, you know, if you have patients or family members that tell you that I can go here and get this kind of care, like, you can't downplay it or say, no, 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 that's not right. Because there are always new things coming out. And nurses have to be receptive to new medic medications, new technology, new surgeries, new drugs, all kinds of stuff. You can't be stuck in your ways, especially if you're an older nurse or you've been around for a while. Um... Because you have to stay up on it. You have to stay educated. You have to continue to grow in your nursing profession and in your education. Um, and then the article that I chose was from the Workplace Health and Safety. Talking about the impact of language and cultural diversity in occupational safety. And I chose this article because I work in Charlotte, North Carolina at an extremely large hospital. We have all different types of ethnicities um, at our hospital. And, you know, doctors are from all over the place, nurses all over the place, healthcare techs, housekeeping, everyone is from all over the place. And, you know, the article talked about how um, the communication between not, uh, when your English is not your first language, how it can make things more difficult. And although the family of Jahi McMath spoke English, because they were probably from a different region or, you know, different part of the country, doctors could have come in from other parts of the country. You have to think about that when communicating with families, like I said before, especially on something so serious as this. So, um, the article just, Overall, just talked about like implementing an appropriate language and literacy pr training program in the workplace, and I feel like that's so important because doctors, nurses, everyone has has to be able to communicate effectively. And if you're in a country like the United States where English is the first language, like you have to make sure that you're able to get your point across, even when it comes to um, saying things with the correct. Um, like emotion behind them. You don't want to come off and say your family has no chance of survival, you know, in a tone that might be acceptable in your home country, but it's not really what you would want to use here. So I will include all the references for the things that I used, and hopefully this blog will be beneficial to someone. I feel like, you know, you always have to have different things when you think about making decisions, but for me and my nursing practice, I feel like the ANA scope and standards is the best thing to use. Um, of course, core values, happiness, integrity matter to me personally, but I can't always take those right to the bedside. Um, you know, deep in my soul with my family, with me, those are important, but I have to remember that those aren't how I am to practice as a nurse. Thank you.